These golden Montana hills were once covered in blood. They mark the site of one of the most crushing defeats in U.S. military history, a battle known as Custer's Last Stand. It began with a vision during a Sundance ceremony in the spring of 1876. In it, Chief Sitting Bull saw American soldiers falling from the sky upside down and prophesized a great victory for his Lakota tribe over the U.S. Army. The whites want war, he said, and we will give it to them. A few years before, the U.S. government had discovered gold in the nearby Black Hills and wanted the tribes to sell their land. When they refused, the U.S. government was determined to round them up and move them to the Great Sioux Reservation in what was then Dakota Territory. In 1876, General Alfred Terry set out with 879 men to force them to surrender. Members of the Lakota, Cheyenne, and Arapaho tribes gathered here at Little Bighorn River, ready to defend their home and hunting ground. When he found signs of a large tribal encampment, the general divided his troops. He ordered Lieutenant Colonel George Armstrong Custer and his 7th Cavalry to flank the Lakota and Cheyenne from the south to keep them from escaping the larger military attack from the north. But soon after, Custer heard that his troops had been spotted. Afraid that the tribes would scatter before the rest of the army arrived, he decided to attack, even though he had no backup. Custer divided his cavalry into three battalions, while his own battalion of 210 men headed north. He was hoping he could surround and force the tribes into submission. But Custer's plan was about to go horribly wrong. Little is known about what happened next, but it's believed that hundreds of Cheyenne and Lakota quickly overwhelmed Custer's troops. Many were killed as native warriors pursued them across these dry hills. It was in this ravine that the last of Custer's men met their fate, taken down by clubs, arrows, and bullets. Not a single one survived. Colonel Custer was found near the top of Last Stand Hill, with a shot to his head and one to his chest. Legend has it that Lakota warrior Crazy Horse personally killed Custer, but no one knows for sure. Historians believe that the Battle of Little Bighorn lasted about an hour. Not a single one of the soldiers in Custer's battalion lived to tell the tale. Today, a granite monument stands on the site where Custer and the last of his men were surrounded. Most of the soldiers were buried where they fell. Today, their marble gravestones still dot the landscape in small groups, revealing their frenzied attempt to retreat from certain death. The soldiers' bodies were later moved nearby to Custer National Cemetery. It's estimated that at least 80 Native Americans died during the battle. A memorial by a Native artist marks their loss. The Lakota and Cheyenne may have won the battle, but ultimately they lost the war. The United States succeeded in forcing the tribes into reservations, and settlers soon moved in to claim the land for themselves.